I'm Bill Bass, and I'm here with Shop.org TV, and today we're going to interview Mitch Joel, who's the president of Twist Image. Mitch, hey, tell us a little bit about Twist. <laughs> so Twist Image is actually a digital I can't marketing. just call it Twist. There are a lot of twists. There are very few Twist Images. Oh, there we go. So, okay, so Twist Image. Hence the name, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we've been around since 2000, and pretty much a digital marketing communications agency, full service. A bit of a different sort of story, though. What happened with it is, Back in about 2000, 2002, I realized that there was a lot of marketers who were being told to be responsible for their websites, and then sort of it was winding up in IT. And, and I thought, I thought, are IT great. people not good marketers? Yeah, it's strange. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, right? And, and I really thought it was crazy that this sort of huge marketing sort of thing that I saw coming forward as a new media channel was being taken over by the IT department. And the real spirit and philosophy Did you come up out of the marketing side, not the IT side? Right, yeah, yeah. more so. Yeah. But, but I just really felt that it was really a marketing-led initiative. And the, the spirit behind the agency was simply to get marketers to not be afraid of technology and technology mm -hmm. people to really adopt and bring in the marketing people to whatever part of the process they're doing. And I like that it's a direct mail. Like You would never go to the post office and ask them to design your direct mail piece. Mm -hmm. They deliver it. <laughs> and that's sort of the IT and technology side of it. And so that was the spirit of it. And then what we realized quickly as we started developing the agency is that we needed IT and technology. And we actually are a bit unique in the sense of we're a smaller shop that has actually technology built into it. Now we're about 60, 65 people with offices oh, wow. in Montreal and Toronto. Is that a small shop when you're 65 medium people? Now medium now medium shop, okay. It group. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we actually you know, offer that together. And what we find is that when technology works with marketers together, you get some really cool results. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. So you're going to be speaking at the conference, and people get a chance to see you as we, uh, as, as, are you speaking Wednesday? Tomorrow. T Tuesday. 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 You're yeah. speaking Tuesday. Um, so when they go to see your, your presentation, you got some highlights that you can give a teaser? No. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, this is a bit of a unique presentation for me. I'm doing one called Social Media and Reluctant Retailer. And um, the real spirit of that is that I'm hoping that retailers start understanding the social media web 2.0 channels. But really, more importantly, what I want to do is bring tactics. And it's funny, as I was putting together this presentation, I do a lot of speaking. It's all new stuff because I realize that when it comes to the social media web 2.0 world, there's a real blurring of strategy and tactics. They sort of really do blend really uniquely. And so tomorrow is really going to be about building dynamic experiences for your consumer online and trying to move retailers a little bit away from this sort of brain thing they've got going about like one click to buy. Uh, you know, we don't buy like that as human beings in real life. We go to shopping malls and we go walk down streets to be a part of a community and to connect to one another and to hear what other people see and to see what other people are buying. And online retailers, I think, have a ways to go and we're seeing that in you know, really low conversion rates. I'm hopeful that the adoption of some of these social media tools and tactics will actually really build loyalty and some serious sales. But how much, I mean, you got social media, you got Web 2.0, you have blogs, but one of the... I think it's all the same thing, right? Okay, so <laughs> yeah. it's all this, this right. thing, but we keep rebranding it right, to make exactly. it sound new. Yeah. Um, how much of that really isn't just a bunch of BS. <laughs> like, well, all, and the reason yeah. I ask that That's is, you one. know, the whole blogging thing, you know, they talk about all these people that write blogs, but the number of people that read blogs right. is like an infinitesimal fraction yeah. of the population. I think there. it's bigger than, than we think. You know, my whole thing with that is I wonder if people even know that they're reading a blog. Huh. And I tend to show certain examples of websites <laughs> that are really blogs, and I don't think people even know that it's a blog or care that it's a blog. Yeah. Nonetheless, is it real? It's absolutely real. I think what we're seeing is a really big shift in pure media. And um, I, I'm stealing this from Clay Shirky, who wrote a great book called Here Comes Everybody. And he says that you know when the when the Gutenberg Press came out, it really was the first time that an individual could express themselves. We tend to look at the press as the sort of moment in time of the Industrial Revolution, when actually it was really all about an individual's ability to express themselves. Then came the phone, which was like this two-way communication suddenly, and all marketing and communications falls into those two lots. What we're seeing in, these, in the web channel is actually this group expression. And because it's a group expression, I think a lot of people might look at it and say, well, what is this and how realistic is it? And I think that we are in the middle of a huge shift and we can't even see how it's going to unfold and how it's going to play out. But you got to remember that we are in the middle, all of us, in the middle of a world where publishing text, images, audio, video, whatever it might be, is free. Hmm. And, and that changes control. Newspapers hate that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. they don't love <laughs> it. Right? The yeah. business model is right, kind right. of cratering with the, the free thing. But I think that it's a reality, and I think what's exciting is that you know if, if everybody can sort of look at it and understand that the changes are huge, um, 
I think it becomes easier to become a marketer. I think it becomes better, easier to sell because the power of real marketing started off for me at least in the idea of word of mouth marketing and uh, I call it user generated content. And everyone goes, well user generated content, you know, YouTube, couple years, right? Well, no. We've been generating content like painting on cave walls forever. We just didn't have a distribution platform. We couldn't tell people like, don't go here because there's bears that will eat you or mm -hmm. go over here because that's where fire is. But now we have this platform to share that message with everybody. And even word of mouth marketing, which think about it, is a total oxymoron, right? If I tell you, hey, you know, you need to check out this watch, I don't have to market to you. If I tell you it's good, odds are you're gonna go and check it out. Okay. And we're seeing this shift back. And I think it's because of this group expression where people really can communicate how they feel and what they're doing. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's a load. I think it's very, very real. I think the challenge is going to be for retailers and marketers in general to really understand what it means to be in a world where no matter how much advertising I do as a marketer, a consumer can come out and start a blog at the same time or, or create a piece of video at the same time and ha has the same audience as I do. That's pretty dramatic. It's dramatic. Well, that's good. So everybody should go see Mitch's presentation tomorrow, Tuesday. One? Two? Two. One? -ish. Then early afternoon yeah. uh, on Tuesday. Uh, so, last question. Sure. Um, you know, Mitch, you're from Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have an election going on here in the United Come States on. that's pretty, about it. Tell me. pretty fascinating. Really? I heard you, Tina Fey is running for vice president. She, she did a great job on Saturday Night Live the other day. Um, you have an election going on in Canada we as well. Do? <laughs> which I'm not sure anybody knows no, about here. So tell me a little bit about the Canadian election. Yeah, so, you know. It's Who's like going to win? Well, I think the You got a good person, bad yeah. person? Like, what? You know that? what? We're Canadian. We're always nice and amicable <laughs> to all. Um, you know, Canada is a really interesting government in, in general. We have this guy, Stephen Harper, now, who's our prime minister, mm -hmm. a.k.a. your president, uh, same type of role. And he's a real quiet guy. He's not really a public guy. He's not really out there. And he's, he's doing like stuff. Like George Bush. Right. <laughs> yeah. Seems a little quiet <laughs> lately, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's doing a lot of stuff. Um, and I guess it's one of the things where they could always be doing more and they could always do, be doing better. But as far as I can see, it's going pretty good. And so, you know. So like, is there a Harper doctrine? <laughs> yeah. No. No. I, no. no. <laughs> I think they're just trying to ship people to Alaska or something. I don't know. Something about that. Oh, good. When's that election? No, soon, soon, a couple soon, of weeks. Soon, okay, great. Yeah. Okay, great. Mitch Joel from Twist Image. Thank you.